what do we actually mean by superintelligence then? <laughs> While we don't want to get bogged down in terminological mud, we do need to say uh, something to make the conceptual foundation clear. And this video identifies three different types of superintelligence and makes the case that they are all equivalent in a sense that is uh, relevant to daily life. And we also demonstrate that a machine substrate has significantly more intelligent uh, potential than a biological substrate. Machines have several inherent advantages that will render them vastly superior. Even with enhancements, biological humans will still be inferior. In special fields, many machines and non-human animals already outperform humans, like bats are better at deciphering sonar signals than humans are, calculators are faster at mass, and chess programs are superior to us. And the variety of particular tasks for which software is more effective will keep growing. The prospect of machine intellects with sufficient general intelligence to completely replace uh, human across the board raises additional profound issues, uh, and despite the fact that uh, there will be many applications for specialized information processing systems. Uh, as stated earlier, I use the term uh, superintelligence to describe brains that significantly outperform the best minds in existence today uh, across a wide range of very general cognitive domains. And this is still very nebulous because under this definition, various system types with a wide range of performance characteristics uh, could be considered superintelligences. And it is useful to break down this straightforward idea of superintelligence by, by identifying various bundles of intellectual superabilities in order to advance uh, the analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, there are numerous ways to carry out this decomposition. According to Dr. Nick Bostrom, there are three types of superintelligence. The first one is speed superintelligence. The second one is collective superintelligence. And the third one is quality superintelligence. Let's review them together. An intellect that is identical to a human mind, mind but faster is referred to as a super speed superintelligence. The simplest type of superintelligence to understand conceptually is this one, I mean speed superintelligence, and following is a definition of speed superintelligence. Speed superintelligence, a system can, can, that can do all that a human intellect can do, but much faster. Here, when I say much faster, I mean roughly multiple orders of magnitude, but rather than attempting to eliminate all remaining ambiguity from the definition, I will leave it up to the viewers, I mean for you to apply common sense to it. A wild brain simulation running on quick uh, hardware would be the most basic example of speed, speed superintelligence. Say a simulation that operates 10,000 times faster than a biological brain could read a book in a matter of seconds and complete a PhD thesis uh, in a single afternoon. An emulation could complete a millennium's worth of intellectual work in one working day with a speed of factor uh, of a one million. Events in the outside world seem to unfold slowly to such a quick mind. Uh, imagine that your mental rate uh, was 10,000. And if your physical friend were to drop his tea to his teacup, you could watch the porcelain slither toward the car carpet over the course of several hours, like a comet silently gliding through a space toward the horrendous world with a distant planet. Additionally, you could see your friend's body gradually take, take on the appearance of uh, a front as the anticipation of the impending crash uh, slowly spreads through the folds of his gray matter and from there into his peripheral nervous system. And because of this apparent time dilation of the material world, a speed superintelligence uh, would prefer to work with digital objects. It could live in virtual reality and deal in the information economy. Alternatively, uh, it could interact with the physical environment by means of nanoscale manipulators, since limbs at such small scales could operate faster than microscopic appendages. A fast mind might commune mainly with other fast minds rather than uh, with bright like molasses like humans. Uh, the speed of light uh, becomes an increasingly important constraint as minds get faster since faster minds face greater opportunity cost in the, cost in the use of their uh, time for traveling or communicating each other over long distances.
<laughs> light is a roughly a million times faster than a jet plane. So it will take a digital agent with a mental speed up of say one million times uh, more about the same amount of subjective time to travel across the globe uh, as it does a contemporary human journey. Like dialing somebody long distance would take as, uh, as long as getting there in person. So uh, it would be cheaper as a call would require less bandwidth. Agents with large mental speedups who want to converge extensively might find it advantages to move near one another. Mm -hmm. Extremely fast minds with need for frequent interaction may take up uh, residence in computers located in the same building to avoid mm -hmm. frustrating latencies. Mm -hmm. A system that performs better by combining numerous smaller intelligences is another example of superintelligence which is collective mm -hmm. superintelligence. And it defines as a system composed of a larger, large number of smaller intellects such that uh, systems overall performance across many very general domains vastly outstrips mm -hmm. that of any current cognitive system. Compared to speed superintelligence, collective superintelligence, superintelligence is less conceptually simple. However, empirically, uh, mm -hmm. it is more well, well known. While we lack experience with uh, human level minds uh, that operate at significantly different clock speeds, we do have a lot of experience with collective intelligence, systems made up of a variety of human level parts that cooperate in a variety of ways. If we adopt a somewhat abstract viewpoint, we can see organizations like businesses, work themes, gossip networks, advocacy groups, academic communities, nations, and even uh, humanity as a whole as loosely defined systems uh, capable of resolving various categories of intellectual issues. We have some understanding of how quickly various tasks are defeated by the force of organizations of different size and uh, composition uh, thanks to the experience. Using parallel approaches and independent verification, mm -hmm. uh, collective intelligence excels at resolving problems that are easily divided into smaller components. There are many uh, opportunities for division of labor in projects like uh, creating the space, sh space shuttle or running a fast food chain. Various engineers work on various spacecraft parts and various staffs from various restaurants. Mm -hmm. Also, it is not conductive to the type of work represented in this video. The rigid division of academic researchers, students, journals, grants, uh, prizes into distinct, distinct self-contained uh, disciplines may be seen as a necessary recommendation to the practicalities of allowing many diversely motivated individuals and teams to contribute to the advancements of human knowledge while working relatively independently and each plowing their own furrow. A system's collective intelligence could be enhanced by expanding the number of the quality uh, of its constituent intellects or, or by improving uh, the quality of their organization. To obtain a collective superintelligence from any present day collective uh, intelligence would require a very great degree of enhancement. The resulting system would need to be capable of vastly uh, outperforming any current collective intelligence or other cognitive mm -hmm. system across many very general domains. A new conference format that lets scholars exchange information more effectively or a new collaborative information uh, filtering algorithm that better predicted users rating of books and movies mm -hmm. uh, will clearly not mm -hmm. on its own amount to anything approaching collective superintelligence nor will the 50% increase in the world population or an improvement in a pedagogical method that enables students to complete a school day in four hours instead of six. Some far more extreme growth of humanity's collective cognitive capacity would be required to meet the criterion of collective superintelligence. And note that uh, the threshold for collective superintelligence is indexed to the performance levels of the present, that is, uh, the early 21st century. Over the course of human prehistory, and again over the course of human history, humanity's collective intelligence has grown by very large factors. World population, for example, has increased by at least a factor of a thousand since the place the sun. On this basis alone, 
current levels of human collective intelligence could be regarded as approaching superintelligence relative to a place to send baseline. Some improvements in communications technologies, especially spoken language, but perhaps also cities, writing, and printing, uh, could also be argued to have individual or in combination provided supersized boosts in the sense that if another in innovation of comparable impact to our collective intellectual problem-solving capacity were to happen, uh, it would result in collective superintelligence. And the certain kind of uh, viewers uh, will be tempted at this point to interject that modern society doesn't seem so particularly intelligent. Perhaps uh, some unwelcome political de decision has just been made in the reader's or viewer's home uh, home country and the apparent wisdom of that decision now looms large in the viewer's mind as evidence of the mental incapacity of the modern era. And it is not uh, the case that contemporary humanity is idolizing material consumption, depleting natural resources, polluting the environment, decimating species diversity, all the while failing to remedy screaming global injustice and neglecting permanent humanistic or spiritual values maybe. However, uh, setting aside the question of how modernity's shortcomings stack up against the not so inconsiderable failings of earlier epochs, uh, nothing in our definition of collective superintelligence implies that a society with greater collective intelligence is necessarily better off. And the definition that doesn't even imply that the more collectively intelligent society is wiser. We can think of uh, wisdom as the ability to get the important things approximately right. It is then possible to imagine an organization composed of a fairly large, large cadre of very efficiently coordinated knowledge workers who collectively can solve intellectual problems across many very general domains. And this organization, let us suppose, can operate most kinds of businesses, invent most kinds of technologies, and optimize most kinds of uh, procedures. Even though it might get a few key big picture issues entirely wrong, for example, it may fail to take proper precautions against existential risk and as a result pursue a short explosive growth sport that ends ingloriously in total collapse. And such an organization could have a very high degree of collective intelligence. If sufficiently high, the organization is a collective superintelligence. We should resist the temptation to roll every normatively desirable attribute into the one giant amorphous concept of mental functioning, as though as though one could never find one uh, admirable trait without all the others being equally present. Instead, we should recognize that there can exist instrumentally powerful information processing systems, intelligence systems uh, that are neither inherently good nor reliably wise. But we will visit uh, revisit this issue in my next videos. Uh, collective superintelligence could be either loosely or tightly integrated. To illustrate a case of loosely integrated collective superintelligence, mm -hmm. imagine a planet, say mega Earth, which has the same level of communication and coordination technologies that we currently have on the real Earth, but with a population uh, one million times as large. With such a huge population, uh, the total intellectual workforce on that imaginary mega Earth will be corresponding correspondingly larger than on our planet. Suppose that a scientific genius of the caliber of a Newton or an Einstein arises at least once for every 10 billion people. Then on mega Earth, there will be 700,000 such geniuses living, uh, living uh, contemporaneously alongside proportionally vast multitudes of slightly lesser talents. New ideas and technologies will be developed at a furious pace and global civilization on mega Earth uh, would constitute a loosely integrated collective superintelligence. If we gradually increase the level of integration of a collective superintelligence, uh, it may eventually become a unified intellect, a single large mind as opposed to a mere assemblage of uh, loosely interacting smaller human minds. The inhabitants of mega earths could take steps in that direction by improving communications and coordination technologies and by developing better ways for many individuals to work on any hard intellectual problem together a collective superintelligence could thus uh, after gaining sufficiently in integration become a 
quality superintelligence. Let's now review the quality superintelligence. Well, uh, we can distinguish a third form of superintelligence, namely quality superintelligence like this. A system that is at least as fast as a human mind and vastly qualitatively smarter. Similar to collective superintelligence, the concept of quality intelligence can be a little hazy. In this case, the difficulty is made worse by the fact that we have no experience with uh, variations in intelligence quality that are higher than the upper end of the current human distribution. However, by taking a look at some related cases, we can begin to understand the idea. First, we can expand, expand the range of our reference points by considering non-human animals, uh, which have intelligence of lower quality. Uh, non-human animals lack complex structured language. They are capable of no or only rudimentary tool use and uh, tool construction. They are severely restricted in their ability to make long-term plans and they have very limited abstract reasoning ability. None, nor are these limitations uh, fully explained by a lack of speed or of collective intelligence among non-human animal minds. And in terms of raw uh, computational power, human brains are probably inferior to those of some large animals, uh, <clears throat> including elephants and whales. And uh, also humanity's complex technological civilization would be impossible without our uh, massive adv advantage in collective intelligence. Not all distinctly human cognitive capabilities depend on collective superintelligence. Many are highly uh, developed even in small, isolated hunter-gatherer bands. And many are not nearly as highly developed among highly organized non-human animals, such as chimpanzees and dolphins intensely trained by human instructors or ants living in their own large and well-ordered societies. Evidently, the remarkable intellectual achievements of Homo sapiens are to a significant extent attributable to specific features of our brain, uh, brain architecture, features that depend on a unique genetic endowment not shared by other animals. This observation can help us illustrate the concept of superintelligence. It is intelligence of quality at least as superior to that of human intelligence as the quality of human intelligence is superior to that of elephants, dolphins, or chimpanzees. And the second way to illustrate the concept of quality superintelligence is by noting uh, the domain-specific cognitive deficits that uh, can afflict individual humans, uh, particularly deficits that are not caused by general dementia or other conditions uh, associated with wall cell destruction of the brain's neurocomputation AI or resources. Consider, uh, for, in for instance, individuals with autism spectrum disorders who may have striking defici deficits in social cognition uh, while functioning well in other cognitive domains, or individuals with congenital amusia who are unable to hum or uh, recognize simple tunes yet perform normally in most other respects. Many other instances could be adduced from the neuro physiatric literature, which is replete with case studies of patients suffering narrowly circumscribed deficits caused by uh, genetics abnormalities or brain trauma. Such examples show that normal human adults have uh, a range of remarkable cogn cognitive talents that are not simply a function of possessing a, a sufficient amount of general neural processing power or even a sufficient amount of general intelligence. Uh, specialized neural circuitry is also needed. This observation suggests the idea of possible but non-realized cognitive talents, talents that no actual human possesses even though other intelligence systems are the ones with no more computing power than the human brain, that did have those talents uh, would gain enormously in their ability to accomplish a wide range of strategically uh, relevant tasks. And accordingly, uh, by considering non-human animals and human individuals with domain-specific cogn cognitive deficits, we can form some notion of different qualities of intelligence and the practical difference they make. Uh, had Homo sapiens lack it, for example, the cognitive uh, models that enable complex, complex linguistic representations 
it might have been just another uh, simian species living in harmony with nature. And conversely, uh, were we to gain some new set of modules given an uh, advantage comparable to that of being able to form complex, complex linguistic uh, representations, uh, we would become super intelligent. Many of these forms of superintelligence has the potential to eventually develop the technology required to produce the others. These three types of superintelligence have equivalent indirect effects. If we assume that we will eventually be able to create some kind of superintelligence, then the indirect reach of current human intelligence also falls into the same equivalence class. And the three types of superintelligence are, however, somewhat in, in, interconnected in that any any one of them could uh, generate additional types of superintelligence more quickly than we could produce any type of su superintelligence from our current starting point. The direct reaches of the three different forms of superintelligence are harder to compare. There may be no definite ordering. Their respective capabilities depend on the degree to which they instantiate their respective advantages. How fast a speed superintelligent is, how qualitatively superior a quali quality superintelligence is, and so forth. At most, we might say that uh, Cetris Paribus uh, speed in in superintelligence excels at tasks requiring the rapid execution of a, a long series of steps that must be performed sequentially, while collective superintelligence excels at tasks admitting of. Uh, analytic decomposition into parallelizable super subtasks uh, and tasks uh, demanding the combination of many different perspectives and uh, say skill sets. In some way sense, quality superintelligence will be the most capable form of all in as much as uh, it could grasp and solve problems that are, that are uh, for all, all practical purposes uh, beyond the direct reach of speech superintelligence and collective superintelligence. Quantity can be a poor uh, substitute for quality in some fields. In search of lost time can be written by a lone genius who works uh, from a uh, cork-lined bedroom. Will an office building full of literary hacks produce a work of art on par with that? Even within the current range of human variation, uh, we can observe that some tasks are greatly benefited by the labor of a single brilliant genius, genius as opposed to the combined force of uh, numerous mediocrities. And if we expand mm -hmm. our horizons to encompass uh, superintelligent minds, first we must accept the possibility that there will be intellectual issues that can be solved by superintelligence alone, but are insurmountable for any ever-growing collective of uh, non-augmented humans. Mm -hmm. uh, there might thus be some problems that are solvable by a quality superintelligence and perhaps by a speed superintelligence, yet uh, which a loosely integrated collective superintelligence cannot solve. We cannot uh, clearly see what all these problems are, but we can, we can characterize mm -hmm. them in general terms. They will tend to be problems involving multiple complex uh, interdependencies that do not permit of independently verifiable solution steps. Uh, problems that therefore cannot be solved in a piecemeal fashion and that might require uh, quantitatively new kinds of understanding or or new representational frameworks that are too deep or too complicated for the current addition of mortals to discover or use effectively. Some types of artistic creation and strategy cognition might fall into this category. Some types of scientific scientific breakthrough perhaps likewise. And one can speculate that the tardiness and wobbliness of humanity's progress on many of the eternal problems of philosophy are due to the unsuitability of the human cortex for philosophical work. And on this view, our most celebrated philosophers are like dogs walking on their hind legs, uh, just barely attaining the threshold level of performance required for engaging in the activity at all. <clears throat> well, when comparing the intellectual and technological accomplishments of humans with those of other apes, 
we can see that even small changes in brain volume and wiring can have significant effects. Machine intelligence will likely lead to too much uh, larger changes in computing resource and architecture, which will likely have even more significant effects. Also, it is challenging, if not impossible, for us to form an intuitive sense of superintelligence's abilities. We can get, we can at least get a general uh, idea of the range of possibilities by considering uh, some of the benefits available to digital minds. The hardware benefits, for example, are the most obvious, like increasing the speed of computational elements, uh, increasing the internal communication speed, uh, increasing the number of computational elements, increasing the storage capacity, uh, increasing the reliability, lifespan, sensors, uh, and so on. At present, uh, the computational power of the biological brain still compares favorably with that of digital computers. So top of the line supercomputers are attaining uh, levels of performance that are within the range of plausible estimates of the brain's processing power. But hardware is rapidly improving and the ultimate limits of hardware performances are vastly higher than those of biological computing sub substrates. Digital minds uh, will also benefit from major advantages in software. For example, editability. Uh, it's easier to experiment with parameter variations in software than in neural wetware. For example, uh, with a world brain emulation, one could easily uh, trial what happens if one adds more neurons in a particular cortical area or if one increases or decreases their uh, excitability. Running such experiments in living biological brains will be far more difficult. The second one will be duplicability. With software, uh, one, can, one can quickly make uh, arbitrarily many high-fidelity copies to fill the available hardware base. Uh, biological brains, uh, by contrast, uh, can be reproduced only very slowly, and each new instance starts out in a helpless state. Uh, remembering nothing, nothing of what its parents learned in their lifetimes. Goal coordination. Uh, human collectives are replete with uh, inefficiencies arising from the fact that it is nearly impossible to achieve complete uniformity of purpose among the members of a large group, at least until it becomes uh, feasible to induce docility on a large scale by means of drugs or genetic selection. A copy clan, uh, for example, would avoid such coordination problems. Next one will be memory sharing. Uh, biological brains uh, need extended periods of training and mentorship. Various digital minds could acquire new memories and skills by swapping data files. A population of a billion copies of a uh, AI program could synchronize their databases periodically so that all instances of the program know everything that any instance learned during the previous hour. New models, modalities, and algorithms uh, would be good, good example for that. Uh, say, uh, visual perception seems to us uh, easy and effortless, quite unlike solving textbook geometry problems this is despite the fact that it takes a massive amount of computation to reconstruct from the two-dimensional patterns of simulation on our retinas, a three-dimensional representation of a world populated with recognizable objects. The reason this seems easy that is uh, that uh, we have... <clears throat> We have dedicated low-level neural machinery for processing visual information. These low-level processing occurs unconsciously and automatically without draining our mental energy or conscious attention. Music perception, uh, language use, social cognition, and other forms of uh, information processing that are natural for us, for, for humans, uh, seem to be likewise supported by dedicated neurocomputation now, neurocomputational modules. An artificial mind that had such specialized support for other cognitive domains that have become important in the contemporary world, such as engineering, computer programming, and uh, business strategy, 
will have big advantages over minds like ours uh, that have to rely on clunky general purpose cognition to think about such things. New algorithms uh, may also be developed to take advantage of the distinct affordances of digital hardware, such as its support for fast serial processing. The ultimately attainable advantages of machine intelligence, hardware, and software combined are enormous. But <clears throat> how rapidly uh, could those uh, potential advantages be realized? That is the question. And this question, uh, which uh, <clears throat> we are going to turn in my next video. See you there.